Decants with D, decanting wine. Decanting helps the wine to breathe. <sighs> Welcome to the next episode of Decants with D. I am your host, Dietmar Ostermann, the regular guy from Long Island. Tonight, we're gonna check out how to decant properly a wine. Decants with D, decanting wine. Makes perfect sense. So here are the rules, fast and hard. Decanting helps the wine to breathe, which means to really oxidize. Oxidation is important. That way, the strong tannins in a wine can air out and calm down. So decanting, in essence, makes the wine smoother. And certain acids and the tannins can escape. So, in general, all red wines are benefiting from decanting. White wines really don't need it because white wines typically don't have any tannins. So there are some that are significantly more in tannins and more structured than other wines. So for instance, port wine, lots of tannins would be much beneficial to port wine to decant a port wine or the whole entire wine space of the Nebbiolo grape. So a Barolo wine and all of the siblings of a Barolo wine. Or Shiraz, heavy Shiraz wine, has a lot of tannins in it. The Tempanillo grape wine, so that would be a Rioja wine. And also the Sangiovese wines, so Chiantis, as well as Spunello di Montalcinos are wines that I typically like to decant because of their tannin structure. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is a give and take. Um, they are typically medium tenants wines. They're not that strong in tenants. Some of them benefit from decanting. So typically when I have a young 2016, 2014 Cabernet, I would not decant it. Uh, but when I do have an older Cabernet that's maybe 10 years old or older, or if I have a really, really, really good Cabernet, world-class Napa Valley Cabernet, then I would decant it as well. So those are some hard and fast rules. If you look here at the lineup that I have in store on the left-hand side, my left, your right, two typical white wines. This is a Riesling, this is a Fumé Blanc. White wines we don't decant. Maybe an aged champagne. Or if you are in this rare situation that I found myself once in Schloss Johannesburg where I went down in the cellar and they offered me a 100 year old Riesling wine, yes, you would decant that wine. But typically white wines we don't decant. This is new for you, probably some, for, some of you Pinot Noir, no tannins, you would never decant a Pinot Noir. Here is a typical early 2015 middle of the road Cabernet, the Hess uh, wouldn't decant it. A Merlot, which is really the sister wine to the Cabernet, wouldn't decant it. But then all of them here on my right, your left, I would decant. So this is a Barolo, definitely decant a Barolo, lots of tannins in a Barolo. This is a Brunello, I would decant a Brunello. Here's a Chianti. Yes, I would decant the Chianti. Over here, a top notch Napa Valley Cabernet, the uh, Stack Sleep Sellers SLV. That's the one who won the Paris competition in 1976. Beat all the French wines. Yes, I would decant it every single time, even though it's only a 2016. Or here, another favorite of mine, a Robert Mondavi Private Reserve 2010. I would decant it for two reasons. A, it's over 10 years old, and B, it's a great Napa Valley Cabernet can benefit from decanting. Or over here, two of the second gross French Bordeaux. 
This one right here is a 2014. Yes, I would decant it even though it's young because there, you know, a lot of the tannins that may be in the wine can escape and the wine will taste better. And over here is an older one, 2006, uh, Baron de Leoville. Yes, I would decant that one too. Now, what to decant into? There's thousand different shapes of decanters. But what you really are looking for is a decanter that has a very wide vessel because that allows the wine after you decanted it in it to have the most amount of space that oxidizes with the air. This one is not as practical because as you can see this one is not as wide and has also a narrow opening. This one here, a very cheap decanter, is okay because the vessel is rather wide. But here, my top-notch Riedel decanter, that would be optimal. Now, here is news for you as well. Some people say, and I see it all the time, top-notch wine tasters, let me open up this bottle so it can breathe. Uh-uh, it doesn't do anything. If you open up this small little bottle, you just pull out the cork, there's this tiny little coin size shape of wine that interacts with the oxygen. Whereas if you pour it in this big vessel, first of all, you pour the whole entire wine. That already, in whatever vessel you are pouring the wine into, does a lot of the decanting, the airing and interference with oxygen. But if you have it in a big vessel like this and you let it sit here for an hour or two, that does the trick. So that is uh, one of my uh, pit points. The other one is, how long should you decant for? And as I was giving it away just a moment ago, if you just pour the wine out of the bottle into the decanter, it already interacts in that moment with so much oxygen that that by itself does the trick. But if you have, for instance here, a Brunello di Montalcino, and I'm gonna open this one up tonight, and you wanna decant it for like an hour. That is when this big vessel makes a lot of sense because that's where not only you're giving the, the wine the chance to breathe by pouring it from the bottle into the vessel, but also when it sits in the vessel, it has a lot of airspace left. So those are some of the keys of decanting. And can you over decant? Yes, you can. Just think about it. If you open up a bottle of wine, you drink half of it and you leave the rest for the next day, it never tastes the same. And that was, you know, after decanting, so to speak, for 12 or 24 hours. So yes, decanting is either immediately or you let it sit for one, two or three hours. So if you have a complicated Brunello di Montalcino and the wine is 10 years or 15 years old, I think it would make sense to let it maybe decan for two or three hours, but that's the maximum. So you pour it into the bottle carefully. If there are any sediments left in the bottle, try to leave them in the bottle. That's why you're not pouring like crazy and holding the bottle on a 90 degree angle. You're trying to keep it parallel to the ground. So I'm leaving a little bit in, that's where the sediment is. And then we have the wine properly decanted. And look how much airspace now the wine has. I'm gonna get myself a glass now and we're gonna try this Brunello. All right, I'm back with a glass and here let's go and try this Brunello. It has now only been decanted for about five minutes but it has been pulled out of the bottle and it had the chance to interact with some oxygen. We see a beautiful Brunello sparkling garnet color. Excellent color. This is by the way, ladies and gentlemen, a 2012 Castel Giocondo. Castel Giocondo 2012 Brunello di Montalcino. The 2012 was an excellent year in Brunello. Cherry aromas, sour cherry, 
a little bit of raspberry and blackberry in here. A little bit of hay. Beautiful aromas. Let's give it a whirl! Full sour cherry in the mouth. Well balanced. A little bit of tannins left. Clearly this wine is the prime example of a wine that will benefit from an hour or two hour decanting. It's ready to drink now, but it's still a little bit of bitterness in the taste because it hasn't been properly decanted. I'm going to taste it again in an hour and we give you an update. Three hours later. It has been three hours now. Let's see how the Brunello di Montalcino tastes now. Deep fruit aromas, a little bit of dust, good. Lots and lots of cherry fruit. I like it a lot. Cheers. So by now, you know everything about decanting. If you like this show, press over here, that's the like button. And over here, that's the subscribe button. And follow me on Vivino. I'm a big heavy radar on Vivino. See you next Sunday.